So those were the big stories from South Asia this week. What other stories that are making to the headlines this week? Let's check them out. Suicide attacks continue in Afghanistan. At least five foreign and five Afghan troops have died in an attack. A Taliban suicide bomber wearing a military uniform hit an Afghan army base near the city of Jalalabad. Coalition officials said five foreign troops died but gave no more details. Four Afghan soldiers and four translators were said to be injured. The attack was one of the deadliest in months against foreign troops. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the bombing, adding that the attacker was a sleeper agent who had served in the army for at least one month before launching this attack. However, Afghan officials strongly denied that suggestion, insisting that bomber was wearing a military uniform but not a serving soldier. Meanwhile, Pakistani Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani has arrived in Afghanistan for bilateral talks with Afghan President Hamid Karzai. Pakistan and Afghanistan on Saturday agreed on formation of a joint commission to carry forward the reconciliation process following the withdrawal of foreign troops from the insurgency-torn country. Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani and Afghan President Hamid Karzai held talks at the presidential palace and later described the palace as historic, saying the two countries stand together as they have shared destinies. Prime Minister Gilani said that he is in consultation with President Karzai, Chairman Professor Buranuddin Rabani and members of the High Peace Council had agreed to establish the two-tier Afghan-Pakistan Joint Commission for facilitating and promoting reconciliation and peace. Meanwhile, Pakistan plans to hike its defence budget by 18% to 582 billion rupees during the upcoming fiscal year due to inflation and expenses on war against terrorism. The Defence Ministry has sent a proposal to the federal government for allocating 582 billion rupees for the defence budget for 2011-2012. The ministry sought the higher allocation after calculating inflation and expenditure in fight against terrorism. The Defence Ministry has sought 127 billion rupees for the progress and security of the atomic program and 147.42 billion rupees for import and custom charges of the military and defence equipment. On the other hand, embarking on an ambitious roadmap to consolidate their strategic partnership, India and Kazakhstan on Saturday signed seven pacts, including a framework agreement in civil nuclear field and a stake-sharing accord in oil sector, with Indian Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh saying there was a vast potential for cooperation in all areas. At wide-ranging talks between Dr. Singh and Kazakh President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the two sides also decided to work for pushing the bilateral trade, which was currently as low as 300 million US dollars, through engagement of governments and business communities and diversifying to non-oil sectors like pharma, agriculture and IT. And it's election time in West Bengal in India and change seems to be on air. West Bengal Assembly poll scheduled in six phases is beginning from April 18, 2011. For the first time in four decades, Communist Party of India Marxist-led Left Front, which won a comprehensive victory in the last assembly elections five years back, has been in power for almost 34 years and is now clearly under pressure. CPIM has a lot to worry about, increasing popularity of Trinamool Congress and its alliance with the Congress, the Maoist endorsement of TMC policies and its own poor performance in the 2008 local bodies election and the 2009 parliament elections. Surveys over the past few months have predicted the largest number of seats in assembly for TMC in the forthcoming elections. TMC has successfully capitalized on government's land acquisition policy. The state had to bow before the popular protest over the issue at Nandigram and Singur. It eroded left's vote bank among the minorities and deprived sections. TMC also won 15 out of 16 Gram Panchayats in Shingur Block in 2008 local bodies election as well. Now the Joint Drafting Committee of the Lokpal Bill met for the first time in New Delhi on Saturday, exactly a week after social activist Anna Hazare ended his four-day hunger strike after the government gave in to most of his demands. The panel will now meet once again on May 2nd this year. A meeting of the Standing Committee of the UCP and Maoist that was to finalise the list of its 18 ministerial candidates was postponed on Friday. According to Maoist spokesperson Dinanath Sharma, the meeting could not take place due to the busy schedule of senior leaders. A party meeting on Thursday discussed the probable candidates. Maoist leader Dev Guru said that a tentative list of additional seven candidates was also discussed in the same meet. However, a final decision is yet to be taken. 
On the other hand, Nepal and United States of America have agreed to return peace corps, which was suspended seven years back for security reasons amidst intensifying Maoist conflict in 2004 to Nepal. Visiting Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Bharat Mohan Adhikari and Peace Corps Director Arun Velum reached an agreement to return the Peace Corps during their meeting in Washington on Thursday. The Peace Corps program was suspended on September 13, 2004 in the aftermath of Maoist attack on the American Center in Ganeshwar, Kathmandu. On the bilateral front, visiting Bhutanese Premier Jigme Waithinle met Prime Minister of Nepal Jhalanath Khanal at Singhadarbar on Friday. The two leaders discussed ways to strengthen bilateral ties and a host of other issues, including that of Bhutanese refugees in Nepal. Covered a wide range of uh, topics. On the other hand, interestingly, the Bhutanese Minister of Agriculture and Forest has banned the import of genetically modified organisms or GMO that are capable of reproducing. It is an interim measure until the Biosafety Act comes into force. Modern biotechnology is currently not practiced in Bhutan. The only source of GMOs is from outside the country. Therefore, the government says import regulation is of utmost importance. Meanwhile, Fazlul Hakamini, Chief of Islamic Law Implementation Committee of Bangladesh on Friday threatened to paralyze the country if government does not annul the women policy. The hardline leader threatened to create an impasse in the country by a one-hour notice using students of 20,000 madrasas in Bangladesh. With that, we come to the very end of this episode. But beyond politics, beyond violence and beyond corruption, what brought South Asians together was a spirit of celebrations. South Asians across the region welcomed their traditional New Year this week. We leave you with these colorful visuals that once again remind us of the common South Asian identity. Oh, yeah.